we actually have a table with large numbers of people saying they feel their emotion changing from head-centered to heart-centered, to more membrane-making to membrane-bridging behavior. So this spaces in the heart, space between harmonics, may actually be related to the way in which emotion is programming your DNA. So now we're going to look at this harmonic cascade here as it might help us to understand how this music in the heart is actually creating the nest of electrical fields or donuts, which is like a cascade or caduceus that's affecting the way DNA is braided by creating a magnetic field around the heart, which may be the way emotion fabricates ecosystems, how you kind of build your world with emotion. So what we're going to do now is we're going to analyze the ratio or how the pattern allows the nest of voltage donuts to converge around the heart. Essentially, we're asking the question, where does the heartbeat come from electrically? This is, we're saying poetically, where do the pressures in the heart sort themselves out? Yet, pressure or tension is Tesla's word for voltage. So we're going to the literature now, and we're going to look at this book called When Time Breaks Down, the three-dimensional dynamics of cardiac arrhythmia by Arthur T. Winfrey. Okay? And in this book, which is the kind of technical biophysics of the electrical origin of where the heartbeat comes from, we see that biophysics technical answer today to the origin of the heart's beat is not just a concentric nest of donuts within donuts, but it's actually a three-dimensional revolved spiral that continuously redimples or returns inside out or reinserts itself or self-reenters or self-refers. And we're going to see that this geometry of self-reference may be the issue of self-awareness and self-steering systems. This is a picture of each of the voltage donuts that converges at the heart. And we see that each of those vo voltage donuts is modeled on the fact that the seven color map on the surface of a donut is self-organizing. And that's called a Mobius strip. And it's how a field effect can become self-feeding. And this spiral on this donut is able to self-re-enter because it in fact may be related to the golden mean spiral. So now, looking at the next picture, we see that this is just a clearer drawing, that this heart is making a decision right here at this little point, which I call the dimpling point, or the turning inside out point, that a form of suction has begun to exist electrically, which is allowing this field effect to be pulled into this field effect. And in fact, what I believe is that the size of these field effects when the ratio between harmonics in the EKG is related to the golden ratio, the size of the magnetic donuts that converge to make the heart fire, where the heart is electrified, being golden mean ratio creates implosion at the center point. It's literally creating a little bit of gravity or suction or self-embedding which draws to the center and thus creates that centering force which we'll later see has a profound psychological meaning. So if we were to look here at what would allow this implosion to create more attraction, this could even get romantic. We could talk about the nature of romantic attraction based on the fact that the heart literally may become a fractal attractor at the moment of bliss. And when the attraction is complete, this little dimple turns into a tornado and then goes through the center again and sucks in a longer wave and then a longer wave yet. So the phenomena we actually get is that the heart harmonics actually extend themselves and the cascade completes itself. So the heart in this sense ascends the ladder of frequencies climbing the number of donuts. Let's look at this picture. The number of donuts which get sucked in becomes a very long wave. So this becomes a picture of the way in which the sound and the voltages of the heart's beat actually become a mechanism for creating a sonic ponytail, which actually affects the DNA. So we're going to look at some pictures now of how this pressure is created in the heart. This is the central structure of the heart. 
This is like looks like a, a vortex or a spiral strip. This is a drawing of what the heart looks like clairvoyantly in the theos theosophy literature. But we see that the origin of the heartbeat mechanically is based on the seven layers of muscle which comprise how the heart is constructed mechanically. And these seven layers of muscle turn out to be layered according to the seven spins of the tetrahedron, which turns out to be the best way to squeeze. And so we'll just kind of zoom out here now and look at that symmetry. The symmetry begins with the cube octa, which is incubating or very containing. But then once you have the icosa in this little jitterbug, you have the uh, beginning of self-embedding because the icosa dodeca is golden ratio. And then if we collapse that further, we have the diamond or the octahedron. And then if I keep my hands plain parallel and perpendicular in this lovely little Buckminster Fuller jitterbug, okay, if I keep my hands plain parallel, I create the tetrahedron, okay. And in the tetrahedron, I have the maximum number of spin symmetries, or axes of spin, possible on one surface. Four of them are face center spins. This is vertex to face center spins. There's four like this because there's four tips. Tetra means four. And then in addition, there's three spins that look like this, which are edge center pair axes of symmetry, for a total of seven arrows through the heart which is the title of the book of a book about the heart called The Seven Arrows by Hiram the Storm. But the point in this picture now we have on the computer screen is that the seven layers of the heart's muscle are actually tilted. You can see this one's kind of at this angle, and this is at a, a, a shallower angle and shallower, and this is almost flat. So these seven tilt angles to the layers of heart muscle means the heart could squeeze the blood into a vortex. The point here is that the heart is not really a pump. In the work by Marinelli in Detroit, he showed that the way the heart pumps the blood is it throws it in this little vortex. And so you have these different layers of heart muscle going squeeze, 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 squeeze squeeze in every possible axis of symmetry that you could superpose on one folded surface. And because the heart can make a decision which layer to squeeze in what sequence, the heart can throw a vortex. And the way the vortex chooses its tilt angle, the decision to choose which layer of the heart muscle fires in what order is based on the tilt of those magnetic donuts for which one converges at the heart, causing which layer of muscle to fire, which shapes the geometry of pressure or the geometry of squeezing, which chooses what tilt angle of this vortex to actually cast a sound shadow of the harmonics of the heart on the thymus gland, and the thymus is this lovely little catcher's mitt. Or you got this beating heart here, and you got this catcher's mitt, the thymus, the thy am us, mea copa, mea copa, which doesn't mean through my fault, it means I take responsibility for, I thump my thymus. Because it's the sounds of the heart where you take responsibility for the way your emotion fabricated the shape of the magnetic field, which is your world. So that's why we say uh, sacred geometry and coherent emotion, because the sacred geometry, which is the shape which organized the heart muscles firing, is what makes the coherence, the orderliness of the sound and electricity of the heart, able to fabricate your world. So this ability then of taking responsibility for your emotion becomes then how you create the braid potentially in your own DNA based on these, this series of pressures, phonon waves, sound waves, coming from your heart in this, this ponytail. I like to tell a story that if, if, you, if you really cared about someone and you wanted to show that, you often would kind of help braid their hair. And when you braid their hair, you do this motion where you take two strands of hair like this and you divide the hair about evenly, and then you do this motion in order to do the braiding, which is you do this over, and then under, and then over, and then 
under, and then each time your hands got closer together because the braid was getting shorter, right? Well, if you took the hair out of your hand and instead put a pen in your hand, you would have drawn the frequency signature of the harmonics of the EKG of the heart at the moment of love. And so you can begin to understand kind of mechanically what Glenn Rhine measured in that study.